Hello, and thank you so much for joining me. Today I am going to walk you through how I put together the Tsukumizu, or swimsuit pattern, that Danny Chu has put up for free download. Like the romper, I found this one pretty intimidating and put it off for a while. I'm sorry about that. But I finally bit the bullet and went for it. So without further ado. Each of these pattern pieces seem pretty straightforward to me. We've got the center front, which you only need one of, the side front you'll need two of, the back you'll need two, and then what I can only sigh and call the crotch piece for lack of better terminology, which you also need two of. Here's the instruction sheet. This tells me the collar and armholes are just folded over and top stitched. The seam down the back means that we can have a stand opening, and this explains how the crotch piece will eventually attach to the back pieces. It's a pretty unique technique, but I appreciate that it serves to avoid a seam line center front, which would look very uncomfortable to say the least. I'll show you how I interpret it when we get to that point. Now I really want to jump in with this gorgeous stretchy hollow fabric. This nonsense cost $20 a yard though and rudely wasn't even on sale, so it's definitely not appropriate for my first try with this pattern. Instead, I opted for this four-way stretch that's been lurking in my stash for entirely too long. This stuff feels a lot like swimsuit material to me, and I think I got it in the sportswear fabric section at Joann's. There's a very subtle difference between the front and the back, so I'm careful to keep that in mind going forward. As I predicted, this stuff is kind of a nightmare to cut. I go very slow and try not to stretch it as I'm cutting it. I also try to use my rotary cutter instead of the scissors as much as possible because I've found that tends to not stretch fabric while I'm cutting and it kind of makes things a little bit more accurate. And oof, reviewing this footage it looks like I might need to replace my rotary cutter blade because it is getting a little on the dull side. I definitely recommend replacing them pretty regularly if you use them a lot because they're much, much safer when they have a sharp blade. You'll also notice that I do pick up the scissors to do tight corners, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. The rotary cutter is much better for longer lines than sharp angles. Surprisingly, my heat erase pen actually works on this stuff, so I mark what I think is relevant. I start by pinning the side front pieces to the center front. I couldn't figure out where the top of the side front was supposed to end, and then I realized I hadn't cut the center front piece correctly. I originally cut it like this, but in reality it's supposed to be cut like this. Luckily, I could just cut my original piece down and I didn't need to cut a whole new center front. Now it's much easier to line up the side front pieces. I take a lot of time doing this because this material is so slippery and weird and I'm glad that I did because getting the fabric evenly distributed between the markings really does make a better finished product in the end. Because the material is so different from what I usually sew, I do take a moment to test the tension on my machine and make sure that everything works okay and I've got the right kind of needle in and all that good stuff. I just use scraps to do this. 
Because the fabric is so stretchy in every direction, I do opt to sew them on my sewing machine with my walking foot first, and then I switch over to the serger to finish the edges. I do this with all the seams going forward, as my sewing machine grants me more control than the serger does. Then I pin, sew, and serge the shoulder seams, just like I did the front seams. Then I serge just the edges of the collar and the arm openings. Even though this fabric doesn't fray at all, the serged edge gives me something to fold along, and I find it makes hemming later easier. I do pin them down before I top stitch to hem them, but I'm not sure how useful this was in the end. I use my walking foot and put my needle as far right as I can, so the walking foot can guide the fabric properly on both sides. While I'm at my machine, I go ahead and top stitch both the collar and the sleeve openings at the same time. Unfortunately, I hadn't folded the edges over far enough, and there's a bunch of sections that didn't get sewn down properly. To avoid ripping the top stitching in this fussy fabric, I just sew these down by hand, being careful not to let the stitching show on the front side. It took way longer than I expected, but it looks okay in the end. Now I know to do my top stitching from the back side with this material. After serging the center back edges, I pin the center back seam together, being careful to mark the stand opening so I don't sew it closed. Once that's sewn, I do go ahead and top stitch around the stand opening, trying to stay about one millimeter away from the edge. Now to pin the last two pieces. I still haven't thought of anything nicer to call them. I pin them along both sides, leaving the back and the front open. They don't need to be surged along the sides because they'll be flipped right sides out and the raw edges will be completely enclosed. After looking at the diagram again, I realize the center back leg openings need to be surged, so I do that quick. Now we try to mimic that diagram by pinning the narrow edge of the crotch pieces to the bottom of the back piece. I realize that I need to finish that tiny edge, so I do sew that with the machine and then surge the edge real quick. I fold the surged edges of the back legs over the crotch piece like in the diagram. Then, when I top stitch along the entire leg opening, it holds everything in place. Next up, we connect the crotch piece to the front with the right sides together. It should line up nicely between the two front seams. I sew and then serge these, but I kind of regret not trimming down the crotch piece first, because it did catch on my serger and make my stitching uneven. Then it's a matter of top stitching along the front. Since I knew I needed to catch the seam allowance in the back, I tried sewing with the seam allowance up because it worked so well for the back leg openings. Unfortunately, because of the extra layers of fabric and this weird fabric's behavior, my stitching looks super wobbly in front. I resigned myself to ripping the stitching out and trying again. It turned out better the second time, but still not super great. I was pretty done with seam ripping though, so it was good enough and I moved on to the side seams. This was refreshingly normal after all the frustrating top stitching. 
I noticed on the diagram what looked like little stitches right up next to the side seams that were visible from the right side of the garment. I suspect this might be to both hold the side seams towards the back, as well as to secure the serging so that it won't unravel when cut short. It might be total conjecture on my part, but I did it and it worked really well for that purpose, so I recommend it. And it's done! This pattern was a really fun challenge. You know what? No. I can't call this done just yet. It's missing something very important. First, I test my theory on a piece of scrap and yep, looks like it'll work. Then, it's just a matter of making the image I want and firing up the Cricut to cut it out for me. I weed the design so that the only thing left is my image and then I iron it down. Okay, now it's done. Believe it or not, I actually worked as a lifeguard when I was younger, so that blank red suit just didn't look right. Now I kind of want to make little black shorts to go with it, which th weren't officially a part of my uniform, but I wore them all the time anyway. I do really love how this turned out. I'm a little shocked it turned out as well as it did, considering I haven't worked with fabric this hateful in a very long time. The end result is so fun though, and totally worth it. I kind of want to make all kinds of swimsuits now, since I know Carolyn here will make sure that everyone stays safe out on the waters. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out, and I hope to have more fun videos coming in the future. Have a good one! Bye!